Well, when future historians come to research Australia in the early 21st century, they will scratch their heads trying to explain why a nation rich in gas, coal and uranium chose instead to power its homes and industries by blanketing its land and offshore waters with unreliable expensive windmills and solar panels. Like the theory that lead plumbing drove Roman emperors to madness in the 5th century, our future historians might one day theorise that the high-powered metal detectors at Parliament House in Canberra that politicians walk through every time they enter the office scrambled their brains so much that they confused modern technology with green fantasies. If there's a silver lining to this cloud, it is that we haven't implemented their mad plans yet and there is still time for a brave politician, of which there's just a few, to run intercept on it all. My next guest is Michael De Percy, a senior lecturer in political science at the Canberra School of Pol Politics, Economics and Society. He has a PhD in political science from the ANU and is a graduate of the Royal Military College in Duntroon. He's also a member of the Australian Nuclear Association and has written about this topic in The Spectator Australia. Michael, welcome. Thank you, Fred. Good to be here. First, you point out in your uh, piece in The Spectator that all power generation plants work at differing levels of capacity. Can you explain what that means and what capacity the various types work at? Absolutely. In, in simple terms, we're talking about the efficiency of converting uh, energy, one energy to electricity in effect. And with our traditional fossil fuels, it tends to be uh, creating steam that spins a turbine with hydro, the water spinning with the wind and, and so on, but effectively converting one form of energy to another. Uh, and there are all sorts of uh, elements of efficiency that uh, take away from the original source of the energy. So when we look at things like nuclear, we're looking at above 90% efficiency, if you will, whereas when we come to solar, we're looking at around 25%. So, so there's, a, there's a whole array, and obviously the difference, of course, we have to take into account um, you're using certain fuels that cost money with uh, nuclear or fossil fuels, whereas renewables, effectively, the original source of energy is free. So how does that rate of capacity affect the return on the investment on building the energy power plant in the first place? Look, at, when we look at the existing grid, which is based around coal and gas, uh, in Australia, then we, we have traditionally 60 to 80% uh, efficiency or capacity, if you will. Th this is reducing as the, the coal power plants age and they're not being renewed. But but in effect, that's your, your energy grid is uh, as effective as the amount of energy that's being put into it. So if you have 60 to 80%, then your sort of uh, your investment is working at that rate for you, 60 to 80% of its capacity based on the original capacity. So when we start getting the wind and solar, in effect, what we have to do is overbuild so that when they're operating at full capacity, we have the capacity to uh, transfer the energy, if you will. Whereas if um, we don't overbuild, then we don't have that capacity. And at the same time, when we do overbuild with solar or um, wind uh, respectively, we're looking at a quarter to one third uh, of the asset being used uh, on average over time. 